Welcome to the 26th Annual Dice Awards. And now, welcome your hosts, Stella Chung and Greg Miller. What's up, Vegas? Welcome to the 2023 Annual Dice Awards. And congratulations to Elden Ring. No, no, we're not. Not yet, not yet. They're, they're, they gotta hang out a lot longer. Of course, we can't talk about 2023 and not talk about Elden Ring. Please give it up, of course, come on. If you haven't been paying attention, there are two types of people who played Elden Ring. One who didn't finish it, and the other group, a bunch of people on Twitch who somehow beat it with just a banana and a tennis racket. And a DDR pad. And a DDR pad, or worst of all, a keyboard and mouse. We're not gonna go there, but now a bit of housekeeping if we could. We'd like to thank Noodle House for producing tonight's video, including that creative intro. So if any of you need your logo stretched, squished, or recolored, yeah. I can get you a deal. And before we start tonight's show, we just want to assure you that, yes, we have guards that will prevent any weird kids from rushing the stage. How is it going, Stella and Leone? Woo! My goodness, thank you so much for asking. It is absolute mayhem out here. Everyone is so excited. Are y'all enjoying Gamescom? So it's going great out here. Now let's go ahead and start with the first award we have here. Best Action Adventure Game nominees. We have Lies of P, Outcast 2, A New Beginning, and The Last Case of Benedict Fox. Oh my god, these are amazing picks, and I'm glad I don't have to make that choice, but I can announce who it is. So we'll find out. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 1's official announcement trailer dropped yesterday and it looks amazing, but we weren't given too many details yet. We know the game introduces a new universe created by fire god Liu Kang with reimagined characters, a new fighting system, new modes, and new finishing moves. We also figured there would be new characters, but had no guesses on who they could be. But in an Amazon listing today, the roster of playable characters and cameo characters for MK1's DLC has been leaked. Now that the booths are built, it's time for preview day. The Xbox booth is right there! Ah! Since I work for IGN, I get a chance to experience the floor to get a head start on coverage, but for now, I'm entirely focused on escaping this Christopher Daniels hammerlock. I wanna do, I wanna do some crazy shit, let's go! Literally just take this wrist and pop it up here, and just right behind the back, and then just start twisting this way, and then ask her where her wallet is. I gotta be in an arm lock by Christopher? Hell yeah! <laughs> We told you earlier this week that Marvel's upcoming Blade movie would be delayed due to the Writers Guild of America going on strike. And it looks like the Disney Plus Daredevil series Born Again will also be affected. Production halted on Born Again after WGA East members picketed outside Silver Cup East, the Long Island studio where the show was filming. The Guild tweeted out a photo on Monday showing that local chapters of Teamsters and IATSE were refusing to cross the picket line. Hey y'all, I'm Stella Chung, joined by Ben Horn, production director on Redfall. Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, I'm stoked to be here. So we have a lot of burning questions, so I'm just gonna get right into it. During the developer direct, we got a glimpse of what the loot is like in Redfall. What were some of the considerations taken when implementing a loot-based system, and can you discuss if you were looking at any other looter shooters to draw inspiration from? Yeah, that's a good question. So we wanted to make a game where players could instantly feel comfortable with some of the, the pieces of gear and equipment that they were finding. Uh, assault rifles and shotguns, sniper rifles that could all have rarity included in them that unlock traits that allow you to play a little bit differently. But we also wanted to take a unique spin on that by adding vampire hunting weapons into the game. Okay, we made it outside. Obviously, there's a ton of people, so it's kind of hard navigating around, but you know what? I'm gonna grab an IGN microphone and try to do it anyways and ask some people if they're excited and if it's their first Gamescom, like me. Is this your first Gamescom? Yes. Really? really. Me too! <laughs> oh my God, how do you feel? Are you excited? Yes, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Neighbor is a stealth horror game developed by Dynamic Pixels where your goal is to sneak into your creepy neighbor's house and find out all the devious secrets found inside. What makes this game especially interesting is its use of AI to learn your preferred routes and movements. <laughs> Inspiring! So the kind of leadership. Awful. Yo, stop fucking up. We're failing because of you. No, they're failing because Ubisoft 
has not been able to make the connection with what gamers want and what exactly is in the gaming environment currently. They are constantly out of touch. They're following trends. They never figure out what they want to do. Like with Hyperscape, which I keep bringing up, was their battle royale that was going to be their big moment to get back into modern gaming. But then they failed because they couldn't take criticism and couldn't make the changes that they needed to do. Yeah. So they're just constantly out of touch with what gamers want. This is not on the developers. They're just doing what they're being told to do. It's the leadership coming from the top of the group. Yeah. yeah this and is like what I was this, about yesterday. This messaging is so clear. You're just like, do you care about these people at all? It doesn't sound like it. Yeah. Welcome to my studio, which is, I'm taking it over, so it's great. So, you know him as an awesome content promoter in the esports and gaming spaces. He's worked with content creators and streamers and covered everything from the most popular games to the most niche. Please welcome Jake Lucky. All right, all right. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Nice to meet you. Yeah, right back at you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, honestly, I did not know you had such long hair. <laughs> it's, it's a whole COVID thing, you know, it's been a long two years. So Yeah, I, I, Twitter does not do it justice. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> that very much. Yeah, so, okay, I, I could talk about your hair like all day, but honestly, <laughs> let's talk about some of the streamers and um, content creators that you've talked to. Who has been like the most interesting person that you've ever interviewed? Yeah, so recently I've had the chance to interview a lot of people across a lot of esports. It's, it's been a Great experience. I spoke to one kid. His name was Kush. Unfortunately, <laughs> rest in peace to Splitgate, as uh, they are going to be moving on to a new game. But he was telling me some crazy stories. And be great. Let's take a look at some of the teams. I think Stella, let's start with your team. Who you got your eyes on? So excited. Yeah, I want to talk about Nicewig's team because he okay. has let's Greek go, and go. Drum Bum on the two sore boys. I'm so excited. Stand here. Up. Putting you Stand on the up. spot, Wig. <laughs> So excited to see them play. I mean, Wig has just been a pillar of the community and from casting ALGS to also just solo streaming and doing so much. Look at this, he's just an absolute powerhouse. I, I yeah. love this, getting to look at his gameplay and see him right now. I don't, I don't know why that's so special to me, but it's so cool. Exactly, and you can see that right now on sweet screen right there that he is going to be able to skip ahead because Hal was able to get the kills here. So every assist counts because you know that someone on your team is getting that kill and they are advancing the tracker. Sweet and Hal looking to see if they can get something out of this one as well. Remember, only working with whites. That's important, 50 damage above the 100. Sweet surviving as he does so well by himself, waiting for a little bit of support from Reeds. Hal still has to respawn. Going with the Wraith Horizon Bloodhound combo. So bringing in the Wraith, probably the biggest question mark for me, but I think Sweet's very tactical about it. Using Wraith's tactical to buy time, the only invulnerability frames in Apex though. Yeah, exactly. Being able to do damage and then get away, scout ahead right here. I mean, get out of these fights. Yep. Yeah, her Q lasts for quite a bit now too. So you're able to get in and out of fights and survive here like that, getting assists for your team and moving up. I see the name, but we know that they're there in a pylon to boot. Yeah, we do see so many teams just existing here. This is going to be a scramble here. Look at how many different points of elevation there are. We don't know who is going to jump first. Now we do see Hal trying to peek out and get any of the teams that may be hiding underneath them, but I don't think they have that angle here. Yeah, they can't risk this. They cannot risk dropping down. The KP is there. It looks so free, but they have to win the game too. If they just get five placements. And they're going to have to do that going into Storm Point. I think that's a big you know, point of, of conversation here, Stella. I would love to get your thoughts. Moving into Storm Point, what do you think are some changes that we'll see and how do teams Ooh. continue consistency going into a new map? I don't know. They're, they're definitely, you could see the confidence in a lot of teams on World's Edge today just because it is a map that so many people have played, especially ESA, because, I mean, ALGS was mostly on World's Edge. So going into Storm Point, um, we did see a lot of teams struggle uh, even in um, qualifiers for ALGS, right? So I feel like Stormpoint is something that people have not played competitively. And this is so different from ranked. Ranked matches are very different from actual tournaments. So for a lot of teams, this is going to be the first time that they play on Stormpoint. So I think we're going to see a lot of teams really excel who have previous experience. And it's almost going to be like an unfair advantage, right? For those other teams that have not been able to participate in tournaments like this and play on Stormpoint because the rotations are extremely different. You have to play your uh, legends very differently as well. So Whoever has the most practice in competitive tournaments like this, they're going to have the upper hand. Yeah, that's really true. You know, we've seen that in the standings, right? A lot of the pro teams that were playing pro league week in and week out are competitive. Thank you, sir. I was expecting 